let's talk about what the what are the lawyers actually doing what is the work they do right that's important to understand so the work they actually do see there is a lot of things a lawyer does in the capital markets work but let me highlight the some of the important things that they have to do some things that are very critical so one critical thing for them is to uh, you know do due diligence so before a, a company can be listed a very thorough due diligence has to be done and this is the highest level of scrutiny in any due diligence than that you will ever see anywhere right before an ipo the kind of due diligence that happens is considered the most thorough due diligence ever okay so uh, everything that matters will come up everything will be pointed out everything will be highlighted nothing is too small nothing is like you know uh, you know too remote to consider okay and that is the level of due diligence that happens in a, in this thing and mostly the junior lawyers who are working in law firms in capital capital markets teams they are doing the due diligence okay interestingly due diligence over time is becoming easier uh, there is more and more uh, you know software uh, driven and ai driven due diligence that is happening that does not mean that lawyers stop working it just means that fewer lawyers are needed to do that due diligence but there are still the junior lawyers in capital markets team they are doing the due diligence interestingly many many uh, law firms are now setting up their own transaction groups what is a transaction group it is basically people who sit and do due diligence okay so uh, siri lamachand has it azb has it i think every I, most of the law firms have begun to set up their transaction groups and the transaction group lawyers do due diligence they don't do anything else they don't do any other value added work they just do due diligence so if you are good at due diligence you can get a well paid job okay it may not be the career track to become from associate the chief associate and partner but it's a well paid job okay so that is there and not only in these uh, uh, indian big law firms there are foreign law firms which have set up their transaction this kind of uh, due diligence kind of setups in india right so clifford chance has Uh, some sort of a uh, office in like you know a captive lpo in in delhi where people work on global matters of capital markets so if you are good with capital markets and due diligence if nothing else you can always get out get some work from there so that is an option okay okay now apart from due diligence what is the other work so after you do the due diligence and you find out what is wrong with the uh, company what are the problems you have to give disclosures okay to while so to so you draft something called a draft red herring prospectus in which there are disclosures 1 2 3 4 5 6 disclosures will be there and those disclosures will have to be written in a certain language which adequately discloses the risk of uh, you know of the business to the potential investors and this is very very critical like you know very critical work to actually be able to disclose that information appropriately in the form of disclosure uh, you know of the risks that are actually that may or may not materialize but we must disclose that's the approach and uh, it takes a long time like this you if you ever see a draft red herring prospectus it's a huge document you know maybe what i can do is i can quickly show you a draft red herring prospectus online because you can you can find them online okay that's the fun thing about uh, a draft red herring prospectus so i can open a sample online right now and show you like you know the kind of drafting involved right so this is a draft red herring prospectus guys it's very difficult to read i think they write it in really small letters so that nobody can read it <laughs> okay but this is a draft reading prospect uh, red herring prospectus uploaded on nsc india website as you can see by a company called sintacom india limited and this is drafted by a legal team right just look at the contents definitions and abbreviations general risk factors this is where risk factors there you know uh, it's a summary of the risk factors in the company then introduction summary of the industry summary of our business all this is some of it is given by the business people by the company also but lawyers vet everything all of this okay about the company our industry all of that management financial statements right F- financial statements as we stated management discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operation financial indebtedness 
right? Legal and other regulatory information, outstanding litigation and material development. This is come out of due diligence, and then they are disclosing all this over here, right? So you guys can see this, and let's jump to page seventeen, where say where they are discussing the risk factors, for example. Yeah, these are the risk factors, right? So this is all, you know. Uh, for example, see the language, you'll realize that this is literally written by lawyers. Unless otherwise stated in the relevant risk factors set forth below, we are not in a position to specify or quantify the financial or other implications of any of the risk mentioned herein. Unless otherwise stated, the financial information of a company used in the section is derived from our restated financial statements prepared in accordance with Indian GAAP and the Com Companies Act and we and restated in accordance with the SEBI ICDR regulation. To obtain a better understanding, you should read this section in conjunction with chapters titled Our Business, etc. All these things, right? But clearly, this is a document which is drafted by lawyers, as you can see. So now I'll stop sharing this document. You can always go and read a draft trade hearing pro prospectus anytime you want, right? Nobody stops you from doing that. But uh, what I wanted to show you that. Imagine that 350 page document has been drafted and vetted by a team of lawyers. Okay, it can take months to draw get one drafted because it's not just that you're writing down a story, right? You are literally you have to verify each and everything you have to confirm from this expert or that expert. You have to consult tax lawyers, environment lawyers, you have to consult like, <clears throat> you know, some you have to get opinion from a maybe a retired judge just to write something over there in that document. Okay. So it's a lot of work, a lot of work, massive amount of work. And that's just how, you know, a lot of work that capital market lawyers do in that respect. Okay. And in fact, majority of work, bulk of work could be around that. Okay. Now these, the two things I talked about was draft trade hearing prospectus and the uh, and the due diligence. What is the other work that in, that is involved in capital markets? A little more senior level work is like strategy, uh, deal structuring. Okay, like structuring a security. Okay, so for example, you know, if I am going to issue debentures in the market, what should be the terms of that of, the, of those debentures? What are the terms of repayment? Am I providing any securities for that or not? Okay. Uh, you know, what if I cannot pay back? Are there any consequences or whatever? Like, you know, those can those debentures be converted into equity later on or not? So all of these things are decided by partners working with investment bankers, working with the uh, sometimes working with the, the regulator, which is SEBI. They work together to figure out what would be in the best interest of the company, what kind of securities we can issue and what would be their terms and conditions and you know is it suitable to the market condition even that is important right so the lawyer who's a partner let's say in a capital markets team even has to think of that that okay that you know, what is an interest of the company and structuring the security structuring the deal that is very important okay so as you grow up from doing due diligence and from drafting red herring prospectors etc over time, you uh, start to become somebody who can plan those things strategically, okay, and and basically help the clients with the right kind of solutions in terms of what they're going to offer and how they are going to get it done. And getting the timing right also is sometimes very important in the capital markets situation because you know you don't want to go to the market when the market is down. You want to go to the market when it's heat uh, heated up, and you know there are windows of opportunity, and you are keeping an eye on the market data that is coming in. So you may want to list in a certain quarter or not in the next quarter, and stuff like that keeps going on. If your if your IPO is not done within a certain period of time, it might uh, you know investors may lose interest in it. So there are many th things like that. These are like business concerns. That the partner has to ensure that you know from the legal team there is full support to get it done okay to get it done the way that is needed to be done so timing is so that's why capital market teams have a lot of redundancy they have they hire more lawyers than they actually need in a given point of time 
because sometimes they might get a big transaction which they have to push through really quickly and if they don't have enough manpower at the time they will not be able to do it so that's why they might have they hire more people and they find if those people are sitting around not doing any work for a while but suddenly they know that one day there will be a big transaction from which we will make a lot of money but we cannot take that transaction if the uh, if the if the we don't have any enough number of lawyers in our team okay so that's how it works okay so apart from this what is the other work now listen if you even if i get listed my work does not get done right because now i have an ongoing relationship with the stock exchange and i have to uh, draft disclosures like everything that happens in the company maybe i lost a valued key manager maybe i lost you know some big contract maybe a uh, government is planning a certain law that goes against me now whatever i do legally maybe a litigation started whatever my legal department is doing that's okay but i need to now have a capital markets <clears throat> arm in my company or i may have a lawyer doing it for me a law firm doing it for me that they'll constantly comply with all the regulations of sebi and constantly disclose to them in the right language and in the right way constantly disclose all of these things otherwise the company will be in grave trouble okay 